Alright everyone, let's have a chat about what is going on underneath the surface of Activision Blizzard. Because there was some spicy stuff today that hasn't been widely uh, talked about, I'll get into why soon. Now, the Activision side of the business really seems to be going from strength to strength, publicly, and by the numbers. But there are recent reports that tie to or point to some very messy resource handling, and also some rumors and things from sources to get into. Then for the Blizzard side of the business, well, it's a bit odd because yes, World of Warcraft is performing, giving them the numbers they want, but they're still losing millions of players that have done over the last few years, basically because their projects are taking a long time to get out. And they're now having to even accommodate the incoming Activision support studios. So today we're going to work through all this. We're going to make sense of what's actually going on. That's what we're going to do. If you want to support us in doing that and also get some cool loot, you can check out the Patreon link down below. With that said, let's go. All right, so as you're going to know from our coverage, ActiBlizz just had a bang in a quarter, right? They had incredible revenue growth, and Call of Duty Mobile pushed Activision to 147 million monthly active users. Now, Shadowlands did well, but Blizzard's MAUs have been dwindling, which is obviously hardly a surprise because Overwatch was 2016 and the other things have been slow. Now, what is becoming apparent is that things are quite a mess over there, and that is really a lot of what we're going to talk about today. Now, it's important to know that while a lot, a lot of the stuff here is, you know, unconfirmed, um, look, it is based on a few corroborated sources. It is stuff that I do believe to be true, based on that. Obviously, though, take stuff with a pinch of salt. So, while earnings calls are, you know, about the company, right, are all going to be showing off their good numbers, right, putting the good spin and everything, Activision's did raise a few questions. Staffing was a big topic of it, where Bobby reconfirmed their plan to hire 2,000 developers within the next two years, and that some of their teams are even going to triple in size. Now, some of that hiring has already been taking place, we've actually seen quite a bit of it, and it likely explains Sledgehammer having an entire new studio. But... This commitment to expansion, I mean, the, the other side of it is something that we kind of now know about Activision, and that is that they are seemingly not particularly great at managing staff. Their reputation with contractors is particularly poor. Now, much has been written by the press about the game industry's just ongoing problem with people basically being perm attempts. I remember there being big reports out about that in regards to Treyarch. Um, that is a big problem. Uh, but when it basically comes to ensuring that temporary employees are disposable as possible, mm, yeah, Activision Blizzard are kind of pros. They're especially bad when it comes to outsourced workers as well. Now, Activision Blizzard's flippant approach to staffing, of course, is something that clashes rather harshly with uh, their current strategy of chopping and changing development resources all about the place. And this is where we get to the big recent example, which of course is Toys for Bob. New sources suggest that Crash 4 did not meet Activision's sales projections as set by the Insane Trilogy sales. Sadly, this reportedly led to the cancellation of all of Toys for Bob's ongoing projects and the staff being shifted across to, I believe, mainly Call of Duty, but also some Overwatch 2. Apparently, Crash 5 was in the works alongside Wumpa League. But I now hear that both have been axed following the per sales performance of Crash 4. And while Activision deny that there was layoffs at Toys for Bob, what we have seen is a lot of people leave that company as a result of the shifting of resources. Which would make a lot of sense, because look, if you worked on, say, the Skylanders games, you then end up working on Crash, you're working in Spyro, are you really going to be the type of artist who wants to make gun skins for Call of Duty, right? I mean, people aren't as seamlessly transferable as Activision seem to believe, and I think a lot of us customers intuitively know that putting the Spyro people onto the gritty shooting game is odd, right? Now, what kind of sales were Activision expecting anyway from Crash 4? Because... Crash 4 released at the turn of a new console generation with a big premium price tag and without the, uh, you know, all-important trilogy nostalgia factor. I mean, against the Insane Trilogy, it wasn't really as good of a value because the Insane Trilogy was a pretty insane value. 
um, and this whole thing was Activision's doing in a way. At any rate, Crash 4's underperformance is said to have uh, prompted Activision to nix all retro-inspired titles, which certainly does not bode well for people hoping to see a new Spyro after the success of Reignited Trilogy, which, suffice to say, that has um, dampened a lot of my spirits. Now, speaking of which, development on that was uh, apparently absolute chaos for Spyro. There was a lot of underpaid um, outsourcing, severe burnout, and iffy things. Now, these cancellations also meant the abrupt closure of any of the, the ongoing outsourcing contracts, which then ended up leaving teams and individual contractors a little bit out in the cold with um, not really much notice. Activision also have apparently got a whole thing going on about artists not being able to share their work until it has been monetized in an official art book. Now, I get holding back until release because you don't want to give up your game, but holding for the art book? Uh, outsourced talent also are not allowed to speak about their involvement in a project until it's actually made public knowledge, for an example, through the game credits. Now, the thing there is that's basically trying to brush under the rug how much of some of those games are actually done via outsourcing. Now, this is fine-ish for released games, but it does make any, you know, cancelled games basically feel like big old wastes of time for those who are involved. Uh, freelancers won't be able to promote the work that they've done because of rules like this, so, you know, not only did their recent project collapse, uh, that collapse might actually stop them from getting further work because they won't be able to use that stuff in a public portfolio. Um, and also, they apparently had basically no notice of that going either. But I mean, hey, 2,000 more staff will sure help to fix up those issues, right? And I guess it's that thing, their size is one of their greatest strengths. They are hugely profitable. I mean, a 50% margin, I believe, is what Activision Publishing runs at. And they do own some of the most beloved and popular IPs in gaming. And must surely have their pick of talent, right? So with the amount of resources that they do have at their disposal, you'd think that there should be no limit to the kind of creative and innovative projects that are coming out of this company. And that's what makes Activision Blizzard's recent laser focus on Call of Duty feel like a waste. They have such great diverse talent working across a very varied library of IPs, but they really do seem to have all been just redirected into more Call of Duty to feed that beast, to feed that new ecosystem. Now, it's obviously an incredibly popular franchise, yes, but the bulk of Activision's development resources are... I mean, they're apparently now dedicated to operating that. That's not ideal if you want an Activision that's got a little bit more of a balanced portfolio. Now, sources claim that Activision have um, axed all of those retro-focused projects, so that really does mean that, like, is their future pretty much just Call of Duty? Like, I had still assumed that Beanox were going to be seeing Wumpa League and the new Spyro game over the finish line. That seems to be a bit more of a conflicted thing now. So it seems that all roads apparently do lead to Call of Duty, but then again, rumors also suggest that this year's installment is in a bit of a bad way. Now with that, Activision only just confirmed officially that Sledgehammer are in charge of that game, and that they're heading up a, um, well, they're basically heading up uh, an all-hands-on-deck sort of cabal of support studios to um, actually get the thing out the door. Which is, of course, not exactly an encouraging sign for, you know, the franchise that all of your studios are working on, right? They're throwing all these resources here, yet it seems the new Call of Duty is still in some strife, and that has came at the expense of games that I think diversify the Activision portfolio by quite a bit, and also were great for their brand, right? Like an Activision that's, yes, doing Call of Duty, but is also doing Spyro, and Tony Hawk, and Crash, and Sekiro, that is a more interesting company. And it seems like they're laser focusing away from that, at least for now. Maybe diversity is what those 2,000 developers will actually allow them to achieve. Now, the exception here, of course, is Blizzard, because their core franchises, they're still just about hanging on, right? Though, of course, resource shifting has been seen in both Diablo and Overwatch teams. We've been a little bit Activision infiltrated, but not exactly in a bad way. I mean, Vicarious Visions are awesome, and they were formally merged into Blizzard off the back of the Tony Hawk Pro Skater 1 and 2 remaster. 
Um, and I guess then, with the retro projects being on the back burner at best, you know, are they the de facto heads of the Diablo franchise, or are they just coming in to give the existing Diablo team significant support on D4, I suppose in a production capacity? Now, we do know that they're working in Resurrected, which people who I trust a great deal in terms of their opinions, like, say, Skill Up, uh, say is a really incredible experience. I'm excited for that, and of course, we know that they're also heavily involved in D4. Now, Toys for Bob reportedly have been pushed a little bit over to Overwatch, and while we don't know exactly how much input they have, the news and rumblings of that did coincide with Jeff Kaplan leaving Blizzard after, what, two decades? Now, for the other things, World of Warcraft and Hearthstone, they do appear to be the only teams kind of left untouched by the Activision stuff coming in. Who knows? Maybe they are on the list somewhere because obviously World of Warcraft has had a bit of a tough time really for multiple years now, which is um, honestly deeply depressing for somebody like me. <laughs> yeah, Blizzard have just had a bit of a weird year. Their recent financial uh, report confirmed that their revenue is actually up 7% year over year to just shy of half a billion, uh, but their monthly active users are actually down 16% to 27 million. And those MAUs, I mean, I remember them being up at 38 million, right? That's what they were in Q1 2018, but they have just been steadily reducing and declining each year. And that's even with the likes of Classic's incredible success bolstering them up again. Blizzard's most recent numbers, in fact, represent a 29% decrease on that 2018 figure. And you kind of wonder, but why? Um, for all of this, and I'd say there that the revenue increase is actually quite a straightforward thing. Blizzard's financials attribute this jump to basically just being Shadowlands and WoW Classic. They both released last year, um, and they're both pretty heavily monetized too. I mean, especially with the Burning Crusade, we're finding that out now as well. Um, so their engagement for like those particular brands in terms of net bookings, that was really good, but overall it's going down and down. So it very much looks like the WoW expansions and the game updates, they are, you know, they're maintaining one of their business lines, but it seems like that's happening while Blizzard's other business lines are just bleeding out a bit. And that basically just means they'd need more releases. Overwatch was their last entirely new property. That was back in 2016. Since then, Blizzard's games have, of course, had plenty of updates, like, you know, little expansions for Hearthstone and stuff, which, by the way, have generally been pretty awesome. But it's clearly not been enough to actually keep that number, monthly active users, going in the direction the company would want. And I think when you look at the big graph of monthly active users, you see, you know, you're in the 40 millions for Activision, and then COD Mobile takes that to the 150 million range. I think it's pretty damn obvious then why Diablo Immortal is a massive priority for Blizzard right now, and also why J. Allen Brack mentioned the multiple World of Warcraft, or just Warcraft franchise, related mobile games that are in the works. Now, for big releases, it doesn't look like things are going to change anytime soon, because Diablo 2 Resurrected is almost certainly going to hit a big nostalgia vein, like with WoW Classic, and I think it actually will bring in some new players, maybe Diablo 3 and Path of Exile, people who are new to that genre and kind of want to go and experience some of the DNA of the action RPG, but uh, I don't think it's going to be absolutely massive. As for Diablo Immortal, it's the sort of thing I think the core gamers are really not going to care, but I think there actually is quite a large audience who would be interested in a game like that because it's entirely possible to pull off an action RPG on mobile that feels really fun. It's just, will the monetization basically kill it? We do not know yet. Diablo 4, Overwatch 2, I mean, come on, big budget sequels. They're almost certainly going to do the job they need to for Blizzard, but it very much doesn't look like they're not going to release until next year, at perhaps the earliest. I've been continually surprised about how far off Overwatch 2 development seems to be. And now, there is also word that Blizzard are cancelling and reshuffling a lot of internal projects, many of which we've not actually heard about publicly. So it's kind of hard to confirm what their actual focus is. Though we do hear the morale is suffering, and certainly low pay is not helping talent uh, attrition either, because there are many cases where you can, with pretty much the same job title, hop over to Riot Games, who I believe are located pretty close to Blizzard, and if you can make that interview, you're going to get a, in some cases, 50 or even 100% increase in your, your compensation. 
and that like that's a lot of people in that industry um you know they're they're being transparent about their wages and stuff like that and it generally has not looked good for blizzard whenever that's happened so i mean yeah they're hiring all these developers but on the blizzard side are they going to start offering competitive industry rates for the irvine area i wouldn't hold my breath which is obviously unfortunate because if you want to get the best and if you want to keep the best you're going to have to be competitive in wages now activision's faith in overwatch appears to be a little questionable too the blizzard section of their earnings slideshow only refers to the Overwatch League thanks to its new Chinese esports partnership. And, uh, you know, not really stuff about the actual game. Contrast that with the same reporting the uh, in, in the same period uh, last year, where the slideshow was talking about Overwatch's, you know, overall player count and stuff like that. So, like, that's really... Um, so look, that's really it for today. I think the main point of this video was to offer a little bit of color and context to a lot of the reporting that's been going on there. We've, um, you know, it's the sort of thing, if you're on the right Patreons of some people in the games industry, you'll hear a lot of interesting things. And then also we've had, you know, just a, over the last while, people give us little hints and stuff. It's the sort of thing, obviously, I'm not going to say anything in a way that's personally identifiable to, um, you know, anyone involved in, in any of this stuff. Um, and that's why, you know, if you wanted a whole bunch of, you know, big, big, juicy details, I purposefully am not including any of that because, you know, I obviously don't want to get anyone in trouble. But uh, just, you know, for some vibes, right? Some of the, the vibes that people feel internally in the in the games industry, uh, they're, they're not always necessarily great about this company. Which is, you know, sad, right? I mean, I did start this entire thing off with my life's dream and goal to uh, work at Blizzard and work on World of Warcraft. Uh, times have changed, um, sadly. Okay, that's it for me. Um, that's it. Yeah, no, I don't have anything else. There's other videos on the channel. You can check them out. Otherwise, just look, have a great day. And I'll see you next time.